Before we can start our machines, a free motion machine embroidery, we need to set our fabric up. So we need some scrap fabric. I tend to use some old sheets or pillow slips. They're great for that, as you're going to be using quite a lot of them. We need an embroidery hoop, diameter roughly 20 centimeters, no smaller than that because you'll start to get the machine caught in the edge otherwise, and an air erasable pen or something that you know that you can draw patterns with and it disappears. To start a machine embroidery, we need to put an embroidery hoop underneath our foot, our embroidery foot. You can see that I had to lift it up there. And we always work with an embroidery hoop with the fabric at the bottom, not the fabric at the top. It's easier to actually hold our hoop to move it around and about like that. We put our needle into the machine, drop our foot, and we can then start to machine. But I, remember, you can actually use your machine to go forward as usual, just go quite controlled. But we can also go to the right, and we can go backwards, and we can go to the left. Now I'm guiding my machine here, my, my hoop, with my hands. You can also then start to draw curves. if you wish but I tend to try to go as slowly as I can because it makes life a lot easier when you're following the pattern. You can turn your hoop if you want to move elsewhere. I'm going to actually um, just do some scribbling because then you can see how easy it is to actually control the machine. I moved the machine over to a nice clean piece of fabric and we're going to do some circle scribbles. You're getting the idea that we can actually draw shapes, we can actually draw straight lines if we want, we can draw curved lines, we can do what I'm calling squiggles there, or scribbles, and we can also do lettering, so we can actually um, write some names if we want. Now, so I'm going to do some lettering, I've actually written it with my air erasable pen, because I find it easier to actually follow a uh, lines if I'm actually doing something specific because you then be, you're able to actually um, space it out a little bit better. However, if you don't have an erasable pen, just have a go and try, try it by itself. Or, as this is just your sample, use a, a pencil. That's not going to do any harm either. Right, I'm going to get myself all set up. Okay, here we go. I'm stopping at the moment because that fab, that um, thread's catching and it's going to irritate me. So I'm just going to move that out of the way. And then we can move around from the D. Now, when I've finished the first letter, there's two ways I can do this. I can either cut off my um, thread there, which I'll do at the moment. I'll actually lift that up, lift up the foot, and then cut my thread off. There we go. I'll cut the first thread off on here as well, so we can see that. And then I can start again on my second letter. Okay, doc. Oh, my thread's getting a bit small. I'm going to lose it. I have to pull that out. 
All right, here we go for the E. Now, I'm going to show you the second way that we can actually do our lettering. With a D, I cut the uh, edges of the thread off, but you don't actually have to cut them off every time. You can just lift up your needle and then move your needle to where you need it to go. So I'm moving my needle to where the eye is. There we go, there's our eye. And then I'm putting my needle in position. And you can see that I've actually got a long piece of thread. And what I'll do when I'm finished, I'll just cut these long pieces of thread off. And it saves you having to stop and cut your thread the whole time. So there we go with the eye. I'm going to lift the needle again. Oops, a daisy, my thread has got caught there. And then I'm going to go to the S. So you can see here's my thread from the A to the I and my thread from the I to the S. So we're going to go for the S. I want to take the Y from here all the way down. I'm actually going to lift my thread up and move up to there. I'm also going to give myself a little bit more slack in this one because I don't want to be sewing over the thread. There we go, give myself a little bit more slack. I am going to cut my thread in this one because it's quite far from the up to the K. There we go, we're ready to start with the knots part of Daisy Knots. So down for the K. Now, if I don't want to cut my thread, I can always go back up the K. Then move up again. A slightly different way of doing the lettering again. Back down the key to where I want to go, and back down the key. And you can see it's all doubled this time. So it's quite a cute way of doing lettering. So I ended up back where I started because I started there, went down, followed up, went up that part of the key, then came down, then back up, and then back up again. Moving that thread out of the way again. Always just move your thread rather than sew over it. I'm going to do this one double again so it works with the K, so we've got them all double. Move over to the O. Make sure I don't get my thread caught. Ready to do my T. I'm going to do my T. Twice. I'm going to move it over to the end of the T. There we go. Twice. 
move over to the beginning of the S. There we go. See that my hoop's starting to catch a little bit. That's why I'm doing it. My S is becoming a little bit jerky. My hoop's catching underneath. So be very careful. You don't do that. There we go. Now that's our daisy knots all machine sewed. So the next stage is to cut all the the, the threads actually off. Make sure you cut them from the back too. I'm now going to draw a daisy underneath the daisy knot sign. Again, I've used my purple pen to draw the daisy and I'm following the a pen as a guideline when I'm actually doing the embroidery. I did it twice and I, I was slightly outside the lines, but it's not a big problem because it looks it doesn't look bad at all. And I'm not on top of the lines either. You can see they're all slightly um, squiggly, but that just makes the design look quirky and it looks quite cute like that. So don't worry about it if you're outside of the lines. Quick recap on what we've learnt this session. We learnt how to do straight lines and curved lines. And then we did a little bit of scribbling. And then some letterings. And we did this lettering one at a time where we cut off our uh, threads. And then the rest of the daisy, we actually just moved our needle and then we came back and cut the threads at the end. But the daisy has only got one piece of a thread on it, whereas the knots has actually got two rows of sewing on it. So one line of sewing, two lines of sewing. And then for our daisy flower, we drew the shape of the flower with our erasable pen. And it didn't matter really that if we stuck to the lines, it was giving us a guidance, which is what I like. I like a bit of guidance. And we did it twice. We did the circle first and then we did each petal in turn. And you can still see that I've got a little bit of purple showing. I can, it'll either disappear or if it doesn't disappear, I can actually wash that off. So we've got a lovely, charming, quirky flower. So our daisy knots with our little flower.